Hello everyone and you're very welcome to the first webinar for Incredible Edibles. Um, unfortunately I can't see any of your faces but I'm sure you're all sitting in your classrooms ready and excited to learn all about task one which is based on food origin. So in a minute I'll explain what that term food origin means and take you through some of the ideas that your teachers may have already introduced into the classroom or maybe they will be brand new. But before we do that, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Amy and I work for AgriAware and we are the organization that bring incredible edibles to primary schools nationwide. So all across Ireland, we have lots of pupils participating in the program. Now, I might have a little look and see who has joined us so far. So if any teachers, if you would like to write into the Q&A box, I will be able to see what classes are here with me. And I will also take a look at the participants. So lots of people still joining. Lovely, I can see all those Q&As popping in. Thank you so much. So we have St. Joseph's in Tala. Hi, everyone. We're quite close to you. We're only up the road in Bluebell. We have... A class from Galway, we have fifth class from Belle Claire. Who else do we have? We have Grange National School in Tipperary. We have St. Malachy's sixth class. Hi, everyone. We have Cool Grainy, fifth and sixth class. Hi, guys. With lots of sixth classes, that's absolutely excellent. Great to have you all. Oh, and I see the, the other end of the scale. I have Miss McCoy's junior infants from St. Nesson's National School in Mungrest. Hopefully I've said that all correctly. Hi, junior infants, you're all very welcome. We've got some second classes as well. Hi, second class. Oh, I recognize this name of this school. You've definitely participated before. We have Shelly Banks ETNS and it's first class. So hi to Shelly Banks. We've got lots of senior infants, third to sixth. So that was very helpful for me because now I have a little bit more information about what classes are on. So as you can all see, we've got junior infants right up to sixth class. So we've got quite a range of ages, but I promise all of this information will be relevant to task one, food origin and the incredible edibles program. So there'll be a little bit for everyone. A few things I wanted to say before we start is that Oh, I had a question, that's what it was. So Incredible Edibles, we've got all of our heroes. I wanted to know if anybody had a favorite hero so far. So we have Tim Turnup, we've got Searsha Strawberry, we have Clive Chive, Kean Karras, Sammy Spinach, Lisa Lettuce, and Paddy Potato. Anyone out there have a favorite? We might see if anyone has strong feelings about any of the particular Incredible edibles. Yeah, let's have a little look. So yeah, one pupil said strawberries. I'm sure that's an extremely popular one in the classroom. Oh, another one for Searsha strawberry as well. And we have Paddy Potato is a favourite in St. Bridget's. Lots of people popping in their answers. Thanks, everyone. Very good. A few, uh, a few more in for Paddy Potato. I believe it's uh, Searsha Strawberry and Paddy Potato leading the way with the favourites, and I am not surprised. That is brilliant. Now, so task one is all about food origin. 
So within this task, you might have already be introduced to the topics or the themes of farm to fork or plant foods or animal foods. So they're the main things that I am going to take us through today. So the farm to fork story is how your food gets from the farm all the way to your dinner plate or your lunch plate, depending on when you would use your knife and fork. And the second concept is there are some foods that come from plants and there are some foods that come from animals. So I have a little bit of an interactive activity for us at the end. And there is also a video that is themed around the story of flower. But before we get started with that, we are going to talk a little bit more about what food origin means. So if we look at the word food, we all know food is what we eat. So it can be uh, anything that comes from plant or comes from an animal that is grown by a farmer and it comes from a farm. So there are, of course, wild foods as well, such as the berries that you might pick in autumn. But for the most part, any of the food that we eat comes from a farm and is produced by a farmer. Then if we look at the word origin, so I have different ways to use the word origin. So when we say the origin of food, it is where food starts and food starts on the farm. So that word start can be used to describe origin. And there's another word that is a nice way to describe it and that is begin. So it's where the story of food begins. We've talked a little bit already about our farm. So this is just a little graphic to, to show a farm and we can see that there are a few crops growing on this farm here and there are uh, some bushes over here. So when we're talking about foods, they can be crops that grow from the soil. We could have apples that might grow on trees or we can also have animals that produce food for us as well. But the main point is that all of the food that we consume starts on the farm. Now, if we have a little bit of a look at the origin of our eggs. So we start with our chicken. So some of you might be familiar of the concept, the chicken or the egg. So where exactly does it begin? Does it start with an egg or does it start with a chicken? Well, we're gonna start with a chicken for now and just have a little bit of a talk through the story of eggs. So we have a chicken over here, one of our layer hens. That chicken will lay an egg. It comes out of the backside of the chicken and they lay it in either a nest box or they will lay it on the ground in a little spot, usually that they kind of created a little scrape out of straw and they will lay their eggs there. If any of you have chickens at home, you might know that chickens often have a favorite place to lay their eggs and they will actually go back to the same place every day to lay their egg, their same nest box or their same area in their hen house. So the chicken lays the egg and then once the egg comes out of the chicken, the farmer will collect it or a person who works on the farm who is helping out in a poultry unit will collect the eggs and they will box them up to make sure that they don't crack so I'm sure we all know that it's very easy to crack eggs. So they put them into this box. And then at that point, it needs to go somewhere else. So if there was a farm shop, people might go to the farm to buy the, buy the eggs. But typically, the eggs leave the farm and they go somewhere else. And that somewhere else is usually into some kind of transport vehicle. So we've got a small van here, but you could also have a much larger truck that collects the eggs from the farm and it goes into the vehicle and it ends up in the shops. So with eggs, there is not an awful lot of processing that happens. Usually we just get the eggs from the farm, they go into a box and then they go to the shops. So there might be a little bit of work done to clean the outside, but we don't wash our eggs in this country and we don't do any big processing of those eggs. They just go from the farm to a van and then into the shops with a little bit of cleaning in between and then at the very end it ends up in our kitchens so i am sure there are lots of favorite ways to make eggs at home so i actually my favorite is fried eggs but there's also poached eggs and you can make a boiled egg you can make a, a an omelet out of it or you can put them into cakes or soufflés or anything like that 
So that's a little brief story of eggs. So with your teachers, if you haven't already, you could explore ways to trace food from farm to fork. So the story of eggs is very, very simple. It's just the chicken and then you get the egg into the box, into the van, to the shop, and then you can bring it home. But there are some stories that are a little bit more complicated and they involve a lot of time in factories so that the food can be processed into new things. And we're going to learn a little bit more about one of those stories now. So if anyone was on um, the digging webinars, uh, maybe a year and a half ago at this stage, the story of might be familiar. So we have lovely video assets that are available on our YouTube. So teachers, you can explore them with your pupils as well. But I'm actually going to play the story of flour for us now. It's just a two minute video and it will introduce pupils into how flour is actually made and trace it from the farm all the way to our fork, essentially. Or we'll go with to our kitchens. So just give me two seconds there now and I will play that for us. Now, here we go. This is the story of flour. There are many types of flour. One of the most popular types is one made out of wheat. Wheat flour can be used to make bread, cakes and pasta. Wheat is a plant and like many plants, it starts off as a tiny seed. The seed is placed into the soil and will begin to grow when there is enough moisture. A tractor with a seed drill on the back can be used to insert the seed into the soil. This is much faster than doing it by hand. When the seed is ready, it starts to sprout. This is called germination. The wheat grows upwards and out of the soil so it can soak up all of the sunlight. Wheat is green at first. During this stage, farmers worry a lot about pests. Aphids like to eat the ears of the wheat and slugs like to munch on the leaves. If the wheat survives the pests, it turns golden. The grain is then ready to be harvested. Farmers use a combine harvester to harvest the wheat. This machine separates the grain from the stalk. The grain will be used for food for animals and some for people. The stalk can be used to make straw. The grain is collected in a trailer. Some of this grain will be sent to the factory to make flour. Flour is made by milling wheat grains. This machine grinds the grain into a fine powdery material which becomes our flour. The flour is then put into bags and sealed. Large bags of flour are sent to bakeries and small bags of flour are sent to the shops. And that is the story of flour. Thanks for watching. Now for any teachers out there, if you want to have a little look at any of our additional The Story of videos, you can find them on AgriAware's YouTube channel. There is a playlist that is called uh, The Story of. Now we'll go back to our presentation. And we have done The Story of Flowers, so thanks a million to everyone for their attention. And we will move on to our next topic. So when we are talking about our food, there is a lot of food that comes from Ireland for us. So when we go to the shops, we can buy food that has originated in Ireland or it has originated somewhere else in the world. So we can have a little bit of an explore on this map to see where some of our other favorite and familiar foods come from. So we have bananas and they can, co they can come from Costa Rica. There are a few other places in South America that they can come from. Let me get my laser pointer in South America here. So we've got our bananas. It's very typical to get bananas from Costa Rica or sometimes Brazil as well. We have tomatoes. So 
a, a country that is known for producing lovely tomatoes is Spain. You can also get lots of tomatoes in France and even some in Morocco as well, which is up here in the north of Africa. Bananas from Costa Rica, tomatoes from Spain. Then we have avocado. That's this one here that we hear a lot about. Some people like it and some people don't like it, but it comes from very far away. So um, they can often come from California or Central America as well. And then we have pineapples, which is my favorite fruit. So I absolutely love pineapple. And again, you can see it comes from very far away over in Indonesia, which is just over here. Um, get our lovely pineapple from Indonesia. And then we see over here in Ireland, I would like your teachers to maybe take a little minute and see if any of the pupils at home can tell me anything that comes from Ireland. So we anything that we can grow here or we can raise an animal product here. Anybody pop that into the Q&A and see if they can tell me something from Ireland. Oh, brilliant. Class has said strawberries, carrots and potatoes. Brilliant. Another people said beef. Very good. We're very good at producing beef in Ireland. We've got lots of green grass, which is cattle's absolutely favourite food. So we can produce a lot of beef. We have St. Vincent's fourth class that said cabbage. Absolutely. Chicken, yeah, very good. We have lots of poultry farmers in Ireland, very good. What else do I see? Oh, blackberries, very good. So blackberries, they were one of the wild foods that we had actually talked about earlier. So blackberries, you can often pick them off bushes as long as we're in the right season. And the season is usually around August, September in that those autumn months. Another people has said milk, very good. Yes, we have lots of cows that produce lots of milk here in Ireland. Lovely, lovely fresh milk that comes from cows that eat grass. Maybe just one more. Apples, yes, apples, very good. So we're, we're quite good at producing apples as well. And apples, they come from trees. So they don't grow out of the soil, but they grow on trees. Uh, St. Clair's had, has said we're very good at making apples, blackcurrants, carrots, milk, cheese, and eggs. Absolutely, I agree. Maybe just one more before we keep going. Parsnips, that's a good one. So that's the first time I saw parsnips pop up my, pop up on my screen. Yes. We're very good at making parsnips here in Ireland, all coming from the soil. Brilliant. So our food can come from lots of different places all across the world. And when we do our task two webinar, we'll be looking a little bit more at identifying Irish foods. So some of your classrooms, you may already have started to look at identifying Irish. We will deal with a lot more Irish produce when we go into our next webinar in a few weeks time. Now I would like for us to play a game and the way I would like to structure this is if the teachers could be at the front of their classroom, if you can, if you can't, completely fine. And we are going to have a little bit of a raise of our hands to vote for whether we think a food comes from a plant or from an animal. So we'll have a little practice run and I'll talk us through. So our first one is oranges. Now, could I have a show of hands who thinks oranges come from plants? So you can raise your hand in your classroom. So raise your hand if you think oranges come from plants. And you can raise your hand if you think origins, <laughs> oranges come from animals. Who thinks oranges come from animals? And let's see who was correct. Very good. So oranges, if you voted for plants, you are correct. 
So that was our little test run there. And I can see lots of people raising their hands, uh, digitally raising their hands, which is completely fine. And you can do it in the classroom as well, if you like. So let's try our next one and see how we get on. What about cheese? Does cheese come from plants? Raise your hands if you think it comes from plants. Few people say it's coming from plants. Very good. Now, raise your hand if you think cheese comes from animals. Oh, lots of people raising their hands for animals. Wow, lots of people. So let's see what our answer is. Very good. So cheese comes from animals. So that is a little bit of a confusing one because when we think about cheese, we would usually call it vegetarian. But not all vegetarian foods come from plants. So if we think about the story of cheese, so we think back cheese is made from milk and milk comes from a cow. So therefore, cheese is coming from an animal. Let's see our next one. Sausages. So what do you think? Raise your hand if sausages come from plants. Okay, a few people. Very good. Now, raise your hand if you think sausages come from animals. Very good. Should be writing down all of these numbers. Now, let's find out the answer. Correct. So sausages, they come from animals. So you can have beef sausages and beef comes from cattle or you can have pork sausages and pork it comes from pigs. You can have chicken sausages as well sometimes you can have turkey sausages so there's lots of different ways that you can make sausages. Now let's go to our next one. What about this one? I think there's a little bit of a hint on the bottle so raise your hand if you think that tomato ketchup comes from plants. Lots of people voting for that. Wow, lots of people. Now, raise your hand if you think tomato ketchup comes from animals. Mm, the voting seems to have slowed down there. Now let's find out the answer. If you said plant, you are correct. Of course, we make ketchup from tomatoes primarily. There's lots of other ingredients that go into ketchup, such as vinegar and water and spices. So there's lots of things in ketchup, but the main thing is, that is tomatoes. Now, next one. What about this one? Bread. So raise your hands if you think that bread comes from a plant. Lots of votes. That's the highest vote yet. I have over 82 votes for plants. And what about animals? Raise your hand if you think that bread comes from animals. A few votes for animals. Now let's find out our answer. Plants. So bread, it comes from a plant. So we had just watched the story of flour and you can make bread out of wheat flour. You can make it actually, you can make bread out of lots of different types of flour, but the main one is wheat flour. And of course, wheat comes from a plant, that farmer's plant. You remember the little seeds? So you pop the little seeds in the soil and it starts to grow. And it when it turns golden, the farmers can then harvest those grains 
and the grains get ground up into a fine powder and that is our flour. Now, what about this one? Milk, this one can be tricky as well. So raise your hands if you think milk comes from a plant. Maybe I should clarify. So I'm talking about dairy milk, not the chocolate, the milk that is known as dairy milk. Does that come from a plant? Raise your hand if you think it comes from a plant. Few votes. Now raise your hand if you think milk comes from an animal. Wow, there's a lot of votes coming in there. The numbers are climbing. Wow, that's a lot of people voting. Now let's find out our answer. Animal, of course, we talked about cheese at the beginning. So if we trace back the milk from, I guess, your, your, uh, your glass, if you trace it back from the glass all the way back to the farm, you've got your milk in your glass. It goes back towards the cow and then back towards the grass because the cow eats the grass, which gives them all the energy to produce the milk that they need. So the cows eat the grass, which is a plant, but the cow itself is an animal. So that means that milk comes from an animal. And we just have a few more to do very quickly. This one is a little bit more difficult. What about honey? Raise your hand if you think honey comes from a plant. A few votes for a plant. Now, raise your hand if you think honey comes from an animal. Very good. Let's find out our answer. If you said animal, you are correct because honey is made by bees. So bees, they will use nectar and um, what's the other? They will use nectar and pollen, sorry. So they'll eat a little bit of pollen, but they'll also pick up pollen on their body and they'll suck out nectar. And that gives them all the energy that they need to bring it back to the hive to make honeycomb. And then of course, from the honeycomb, we get our honey. So that's a little bit of a confusing one, but you now know that if we talk about honey, it comes from an animal. And our very last one is this one. So this is tea. This might be a little bit difficult for some of our younger viewers. Tea, I know it's not strictly a food, but it's something that we will, um, that comes from a farm. It can come from, um, maybe I won't give you any more hints. We have tea farms, not in Ireland, but in other places across the world, there are tea farms. Is tea, does it come from a plant? Raise your hand if you think tea comes from a plant. Lots of votes for a plant. Now, raise your hand if you think tea comes from an animal. Very few people voted for animal. But let's find out our answer. plant. So if you voted that tea comes from a plant, you are correct. Now, so they were just a few activities to take you through and to either recap or introduce people to the idea of food origin. So if we remember the word origin, it is about where the food begins. So if you have moved on to task two, onto identifying Irish, that's perfectly fine. And if you're just starting food origin, there's a few ideas through this webinar that you can take into your classrooms. So we have the farm to fork story. You can either trace food from the farm all the way to the fork, or you can do it in reverse, which is you start with the product as we just did and you trace it backwards. So that's one idea. You can do some more plant and animal matching, and you can also explore lots of different food types, where in the world they come from. So we looked at avocados, bananas, tomatoes, and the last one was pineapples. So you could pick any food you like, do a little project, trace the farm to fork story, either forwards or backwards, 
and that will give everyone a greater insight into the origin of our food. And that is all from us here at AgriAware. I really appreciate you joining me here for this webinar this morning, and we will be back with a task two webinar in a few weeks time. But for now, I would like to wish you all um, a lovely rest of your day, and we'll see you next time.